Blaine last week at Fenway Park. 44-31 Blaine, their quarterback Andrew Ford. 17 touchdowns, just three interceptions. He was knocked out the game before last and came back in this game. And he, he's a very smart player uh, that distributes the football around. It's a quick passing game. They try to spread you out and run it um, out of the spread. And then they, they peck away at you underneath. Little hitch, throw it in the seam, little screen pass. They get you anxious coming up. And you overplay it up, and then they'll throw it over the top. So their, their game plan is set you up with the underneath stuff and then throw it over the top. It is a team that likes to pass first, run second. They're averaging 295 yards passing per game, 139 rushing, 437 yards a game. They're defensively, they're not bad. They're only allowing 388. But uh, this is a team that, that kept with Mississippi State. They only lost 34 to 23. And yeah. they had a lead on Mississippi State at right. one point. So this is not a team. I think when we looked at the schedule earlier this year, we said, man, this is the BYU. Marked on that UMass game as an automatic win. Yeah. I don't think so. This is going to be a difficult they, game. They, they haven't the won on the road this year. UMass right. hasn't. So they're coming to elevation and playing. That's to BYU's advantage. But but they they have some veteran people in, in big positions. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. look at the board. Our results for our predictions. Congratulations. Guys, Thank you. Give me yeah. some competition. Picking up here. a win here. Uh, they picked it 28-24 for BYU. Let's look at uh, Saturday against UMass, Blaine. Well, I'm going to go 34-24. I okay. think BYU's offense is going to come to play. They'll hold you UMass to 24. Brian? Um, I just ask them what yours was and try to be very simple. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> David? I think it's a close one. I think BYU wins this one on senior night, 24-21. I'm going 44-30 BYU. There's going to be a lot of points scored on Saturday. Uh, a lot of footballs in the air. Clear your schedule. It's going to be all afternoon here on BYU TV. That's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. For Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I'm Dave McCann. We will see you Saturday afternoon live from Lavelle Edwards Stadium for Cougar football and, of course, next Tuesday for more AFR on BYU TV. You want to see what a happy football coach looks like? Stay tuned. BYU football with Kalane Sitake is coming up right now. Next on BYU Football with Kalani Satake, the Cougars win big in Vegas, and now they seek their first win streak of the season with Senior Day bearing down at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. The coach and one of his senior captains, T. John Karoma, will join us live. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Satake wants no part of the sideline. Look, he'll spin and come back in just to try and run somebody over. Open is Satake, wide open. What's Kalani Sataki? What a nice job on Gerard Newby. BYU wins it for Lavelle Edwards. Kalani Satake as the new football coach at BYU. It's great to be back home. Kick is on its way. It is good! It is good! Yes! The Cougars hit it! I'm very lucky to be coaching these young men. Squally runs left. Now middle. There he goes! Squally counted with a big gainer. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sataki, presented by Ken Garfour, with your host, Spencer Linton. Super Tuesday on BYU TV. Great to have you with us wherever and however you're dialed in. I am Spencer Linton sitting in for Greg Rebell tonight and ready to roll with the coach Kalani Satake, senior center T. John Karoma, and a group of BYU fans understandably amped up after the Cougars' most complete win of the season. Next week's show, as a programming note, yeah, let's get it started early. Next week's show is being shot on Monday due to the holiday at 8 Eastern. If you want to join the audience, go to BYUcougars.com slash Satake Show for your free seats at noon Eastern time. Also, set your DVR for November 28th as well when we debut BYU basketball with head coach Dave Rose. Reminding you to join the program by using the hashtag Satake Show on Twitter to ask questions for Coach Satake and tonight's player guest, T. John Karoma. BYU football, by the way, has still never lost to the UNLV Rebels in Las Vegas. 9 0 all time. Lesson don't bet against BYU when they play in Vegas. <laughs> there are several levels to that statement. Though I am willing to wager the first road win of the season, we'll present some happy guests tonight, including the head coach of the BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. Good to see you. All right. All right, coach. You're 
I had to go to the left because I did that last time. And we're going to try to create a win streak here, so. <laughs> Anything and everything for the win, just yeah. in case. Yeah, I get it. I get it. All right, Coach. Uh, let's start with uh, what happened with the fans in Las Vegas last week in oh, was awesome. in San Boyd Stadium. Yeah. yeah. Well, to see that type of welcome and that experience after you pulled out that win, what was that like for you? Um, it was awesome. It was uh, it motivated our team. You know, when they when they came out for um, for pregame and for warmups and had see all that blue. Uh, our players just feed off, they fed off of it, and uh, they were excited talking about it in the locker room, and, um, and it just powered them through. So uh, I've said it before, our players, I've never met a team that wants to play for their fans more than, than what I'm at right now, and, and uh, our BYU football team, and um, it proved it right there, you know, and felt like a home, home, uh, home field advantage, and uh, it was really nice. So uh, that's the best part of the game, seeing all the fans there, especially after, you know, some of the rough things that we've been able to, um, face this season and to have that that much support has been awesome. But I'm we've had that at home. We've had it everywhere. We've had great support, so we're just thankful for all our fans. Yeah, an estimated 10,000 fans <clears throat> in Las Vegas to watch BYU win 31-21. The party with those fans continued outside the locker room after the victory. Nobody wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah, it's only our third win, so, you know, uh, hopefully, uh, you never want to get sick of winning, right? But uh, <laughs> we de we're definitely sick of losing. So that, it was a nice change up, and it was just good to enjoy it with our families and our friends and, and all our fans that you know outside of the locker room. And um, it's just nice. I mean, we're all about family and about doing this together. And uh, you know, I think we've learned a lot of things this this year. But uh, we're definitely looking forward to performing for our fans. That that's what it comes down to, and our players just love doing that. Thanks to the wonderful world of social media, Snapchat and uh, Twitter specifically, Micah Simon, we got to see just a glimpse <laughs> of what happened inside the locker room with Joe Critchlow. What is happening here? Um, I think Joe was on his mission way too long. For, <laughs> you know, so, uh, he was a really good missionary, so it's pretty obvious he's not up to date on the dances. <laughs> Um, I think Juju on the beat was out when he was knocking on doors. So <laughs> I'm grateful that he served a, an honorable mission and did a great job. Outstanding. <laughs> see a better quarterback or a better dancer, Coach? Uh, well, you could see it for yourself. Right? <laughs> I love Joe, but um, he shouldn't be practicing any dance moves. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair, but he, fair. you know, hopefully, as, as long as we keep winning, so we'll let him dance as much as he wants. He can do what he wants right there. We'll suffer through. Okay. <laughs> what was the most impressive thing you saw from Joe Critchlow? in his quarterbacking duties on Friday night? Um, just had great uh, poise. That's one thing that, that just came to mind during the game. It just felt like he was, he's a guy that just used to play in there, you know, and uh, just felt really comfortable in the offense. And you give a lot of credit to Ty Detmer getting a guy that's been, I mean, just a few months ago, this guy was on his mission knocking on doors, and here he is leading us to victory against UNLV. And um, didn't really seem like it was a first start for him, you know, so. Uh, it wasn't perfect, but he made some really good plays and, and made a couple mistakes, and uh, we can build off of that. But I think he had great energy and had a great demand for the offense, and it was really nice, uh, really nice to see him perform. Third true freshman quarterback to win in his first start at BYU. And the pass game, understandably, helped set up a memorable night for Squally Canada, who had one of the best individual performances ever produced by a BYU running back. Top 10, we'll get into the details of that in just a bit. What has changed for Squally Canada over the past few weeks that's kind of let him discover this new level? Well, I mean, Squally's always had the ability to do this. You know, it's just, uh, I think he'll, he'll tell you, give you a lot of credit to the O-line. Uh, we've had some really, you know, with all the injuries that we've had throughout the year, uh, being able to be uh, consistent with our O-line has been nice. And uh, Squally was a huge benefactor of that. But um, he found the holes, he's patient, and uh, more than anything, he's, he's finally completely healthy, you know. He, he had overcome a lot of adversity early in the year and some injuries, and, and now he's feeling a lot more comfortable. And then uh, it's nice to have him back and, and performing like that, getting 213 yards. On 25 carries, 10th best individual performance by a BYU running back in a prestigious school history. Now, if we're being nitpicky, and we can because we do this TV show, we should point out that Squally was caught on a breakaway run for 54 yards. And his teammates let him hear about it after he was caught at the 11-yard line. What did you see on this play? Well, I mean, great block by Braden Elbakri up front and the whole line And receivers blocked well downfield. And it uh, just seemed like he ran out of gas right here. <laughs> and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll attribute that to the, uh, to the, you know, not being healthy and not being in great shape. So 
Uh, you don't. I think he just kind of ran out of gas, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, he explained it in his own words to me after the game. as, yeah, that was embarrassing. No way, no way around <laughs> it, man. That's okay. We'll take it. I mean, it was, it was a nice run. He took care of the football, and, and uh, I'd like to see him end it in the end zone, but that's something we can push for this week. Eventually, it did end in the end zone with a Squally Canada touchdown. It just took a few more plays. Uh, you've had a multifaceted rushing attack all season, and you, you saw some good things from Austin Confensis, who was one of the most explosive players in Utah high school history. Mm -hmm. He increased his role, had a touchdown, averaged over five yards a carry. How would you define his role right now on this team? Well, you know, he's been, he's been, a, has a great attitude. He's been a team guy from the very beginning. And uh, we knew that he had a lot of athleticism and speed and, and playmaking ability. And so we, um, we started him at quarterback and I think that kind of hurt his progress as a running back because then we moved him from QB to receiver. And so now he's really starting to feel comfortable being a running back and being a wildcat quarterback, you know, and uh, he keeps reminding us that he can throw the ball. And so uh, we'll, we'll see how that, that factors <laughs> into this weekend. But um, I don't think he likes being the call the wildcat guy, but, um, you know, we'll see how, how everything progresses. But he, he definitely has a playmaking ability and it, it's off of his legs that he can make that work. Well, I think he's got some serious mustache game as well with the handlebars growing out there. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not a guy that can grow a great mustache, so I, I can't really comment on or criticize someone's mustache. So, I mean, yeah, he, he, he looks great whether or not he has a mustache on. How do you see his role developing as he pushes forward in his BYU football career? Oh, he's a great athlete, and, and he doesn't really um, – it's, it's not a selfish move for him. All he cares about is doing what's best for the team. You'll see him, and we have a lot of guys like that on the team, you know, and – for a guy that, that uh, has accomplished a lot of things, for him to have such humility and to be a team guy first is just, I appreciate that as a head coach. And I know our coaches appreciate it as they work through him and getting him more prep, more reps and getting more opportunities to play. He's only a sophomore, so he has a lot more, year, a lot more games to play and a lot more years to, to make stuff happen here. You mentioned how pleased you are with the offensive line, and it's hard not to be impressed uh, with what they have done, particularly on Friday night and all season for that matter. They have been one of the most, if not the most, consistent performing position group for you all year. Why do you think that is? Well, there's a lot of, uh, lot of um, seniority there, a lot of experience. And uh, I think Mike Empey is, did, did, has done a great job as an online coach getting them ready. And, um, you know, we, we lean heavily on their, their, the physical, physical part of the game for them. And, and they played a lot of football. So uh, it's just it's sad that the interior three are coming to their last game in the Lavelle Edwards Stadium. So hopefully a lot of... Fans are there to, to show them their respect and love because those guys have given up a lot of their uh, their uh, hours and hard work to, to for this team and this program. I really appreciate them. And one of the big three, the captain for you, the center, T. John Karoma, will be our player guest tonight. We'll have uh, him join us in just a bit and get into the nitty-gritty of why he feels like the offensive line has been so consistently good. Let's switch to the other side of the ball now. You and your uh, defensive coordinator, Eli Tuiaki, have spent a great deal of time discussing the need to create more turnovers, to just create those momentum-building plays. The BYU defense did that against you, and it'll be plus two when the game was over. Fred Warner and Zane Anderson had kind of book-ending interceptions, if you will. What did you see on these plays? Oh, just great plays. Those guys, uh, you know, looking at and Fred's um, uh, interception, there's a lot of pressure from um, Langi Tuifula there as a D end, and. Uh, Fred says he got robbed. He should have had a touchdown on this play. So um, I don't think we really cared about that. <laughs> not that we don't care about Fred, but he, you know, he was complaining. He wanted him to. I just didn't think it was appropriate for me to take a timeout and have them review whether or not he scored. We just wanted to take a knee and get the win. But um, you know, I, I would rather him just catch the ball and took a knee right away. But Fred, being Fred, I'm, I'm okay with him trying to get it to the one-yard line. Okay. <laughs> All right. The coach has spoken. A win is a win is a win, right? Yeah, and turnovers is part of the deal. If we can get, we, I said it before last week that um, if we can get pressure on the quarterback, that's the best way to create turnovers and create disruption, get sacks, you know, and so that's, that was our focus. We, we missed a lot of opportunities to make sacks, and uh, it, in, in, in return, it cost us um, some big plays in the passing game. And so we, we need to get better um, defensively and D-line wise at, at crowding and keeping the uh, quarterback in the pocket and taking them down on sacks. All right, we're just getting started here on BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We'll take our first break. As we do, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast, buffet, dinner, Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. When we come back, the Minutemen of UMass 
visit Pro Bowl for a second straight year. But they've improved in a number of ways. So what does that mean for BYU on Saturday? This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake. 160,000 miles. That's on average how often you'll use your car insurance. But what if you could get help with more, more often? And you could also save a couple of bucks on clothes or at restaurants. Skip the line at the DMV. Even get rescued roadside. You can when you're a member and your insurance is AAA. Insurance that's not just insurance. BYU has given me every opportunity I needed and wanted. The people you meet are invaluable here. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. UMass versus BYU. Saturday, 2 Eastern, 12 Mountain on BYU TV. For those not aware, yeah, the coaches pulled off a pretty good prank on us. So we're getting back at him now. On the phone, Spencer, a rare treat. We have two coaches, Coach Judkins and Coach Detmer. Yes, and uh, let's throw out a generic question. What's the most important part of coaching your respective teams to victory? Well, for me, it's having the players watch BYU Sports Nation before every game. If you guys didn't do the show, we wouldn't win a single game. Yeah, I agree with you, Coach Detmer, because the talent has them and inspires us to be their best every day. Hey, Johnny, let's be reasonable here. We're just joking. This is happening. I want to dance alone. As soon as she takes off in her car, we are going to rush that place. I right? can't wait. I want to dance alone. Well, I'm with a show called Random Acts, where we like to do nice things with people. <laughs> Ladies, I am so excited for what you got going on here. We just wanted to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Nissan of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Studio C in Provo, Utah. A warm welcome back to all of you on Super Tuesday. And a special thanks to our live studio audience. Bring in the heat right now. The head coach ready for another round of questions, right? Yeah, let's okay. go. We'll jump back in with uh, the senior day topic. What is this week like emotionally for you as a coach and for your players? Because you personally have now experienced both sides of that dynamic. Oh, yeah, and I, I remember my last game in, in, in the stadium, and it was actually the first game that it was called Lavelle Edwards Stadium, you know, and so and that was my last college game in, as a, you know, in, 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 in Provo, and so um, it was really cool. We won, you know, and that's always a, a, a plus, but it was just, uh, it's, it's a little bit uh, dis disappointing because it's coming to an end, and, and um, just miss it. And I, I mentioned our, our players love being, uh, love being in front of our fans, and so, for these guys like Fred Warner and Tijon Chroma and, and Tuni Kanuch and all these guys that played so many so many plays, so many games for, for BYU, it just it sucks that it comes to an end, you know. But um, but it, it opens the opportunity for others and uh, to learn from them and their hard work and sacrifice. And so hopefully we can make it work and get them a win and uh, give them something excited, you know, get 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 them an exciting moment and something that they can always uh, cherish and remember forever. I can't believe it took us this long to mention his name in today's show, but one of your seniors, Johnny Linehan, <laughs> posted a picture on Twitter yesterday and said you had given him a wristband with play calling notes on the inside. <laughs> it reads, don't even think about it, punt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish I would have had that for the LSU game. <laughs> so. No, it's, 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 uh, <laughs> hey, 
Um, and if he doesn't see the wristband, I'm yelling it from the sideline. <laughs> so, but I, you know, it, uh, maybe maybe uh, UMass will read it and then let him have one. You know, oh. so we'll see. But okay, <laughs> um, trust me, there's 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 a good chance. You already know there's a good chance that Johnny may go rogue <laughs> and do it on his own. And so um, I will love him regardless, but I'll love him even more if he gets a first down. Okay. Yeah. It's about first downs, right? Yeah, let's go. Bottom line. <laughs> Looking at the UMass Minutemen, coached by uh, Mark Whipple, 3-7, and seven, but they on paper have been plenty competitive, and on the field for that matter. They don't get blown out, most notably... They recently put a scare into Mississippi State a few weeks back in Starkville. What's your initial impression of this UMass football team? Well, yeah, I mean, they're well coached. Coach Whipple's been around for a long time, and this is the second stint there. And, and so there's a lot of experience on that coaching staff. They're well coached. I, I've said that a lot about a lot of our opponents, but uh, this team specifically, they do things the right way on the field, and they, uh, they're really assignment sound. So we're going to have to be on top of our game. And, uh, they put up a lot of points on, on some really good teams and took Mississippi State to the wire, you know. So, uh, you know, I think we, if we just focus on what we do as a team, I think we'll be fine. We match up well against them, and, and I like putting it on the, the, the front. I like putting it on the D-line and the offensive line to take over the game because I think that could be a strength for us. They have the 19th-ranked pass offense in the entire country with uh, quarterback Andrew Ford. They have a really good tight end in Adam Brenneman and the wide receiver Andy Isabella. How do you feel like your defense stacks up against a potent pass offense from UMass? Well, it's, if they're going to throw that much, then it's a good opportunity to get some picks and get some sacks. And so uh, it's going to be really big for our, our D-line to get some disruption and get some pressure on them to, so we can get some, some bad throws and we can get, get interceptions. And that's... That um, I mean, I, I like the fact that they want to throw the ball. They, they'll do some max protection and three-man routes, and so uh, we're going to have to have max effort and just get through there, whether it's a four-man rush or if we bring pressure. What else has your attention besides the three playmakers on the screen, generally speaking, about this? Well, I, I just think assignment sound. They're 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 uh, really well balanced and, and offensively, they're they'll run the ball and they'll they'll pound it. They'll go they'll spread it out and run a spread spread system but they'll also play some power o run game and then, then they'll spread the ball out with uh, with their pro style or spread it out and throw downfield so uh, they, they have a lot of a uh, lot of weapons to go to and they obviously have the, um, the the numbers to show it so it'll be a good good challenge for our defense yeah the quarterback andrew ford 17 touchdowns only three interceptions uh brenneman by the way the only non-power five tight end on the john mackey award semifinalist so they, they certainly have some playmakers on the defensive side, they also defend the pass pretty well, but have struggled against the run game. Now, logic would suggest you would like to be able to establish a run game against UMass. Yeah, I'd, I'd say well, let's do both. Let's be able to run and uh, and throw on them. You know, so uh, I, I like the the game plan that we had last week. But I, I think the main thing is just let's just stick with what what's working and what uh, what our guys are doing well at. You know, so um, I think I think again, up on the, whether we're running or passing. Uh, it's going to be on the front to protect our quarterback in, in the passing game, but then in the run game to open up some holes so our running backs can get, find some some seams and, and make some big plays and hopefully get in the end zone, which uh, Squally failed to do in that one long run. So hopefully we can get that to make to work this time. Work on that high-end yeah. speed? Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, not to be overlooked, UMass is a fellow independent, and so they're going through some of the same early struggles that BYU encountered back in 2011, 2012. You will play there the next two seasons. What do you know about Foxborough and uh, the Patriots Stadium? Well, yeah, we have some guys on the Patriots team, so it would be good for us to, to go there. Hopefully we can get some more added to that roster, you know, and, and uh, they can be there on the sideline for us when we play against them in Boston. But right now we're more concerned with this game and, and getting this thing underway. And um, they, they, they learned that they have to travel and, and do a lot of different scheduling as an independent. So they can uh, le learn, we learn a little, bit, a little bit from each other, but we also can sympathize with um, what they have to go through, they can do the same thing with us. But when it comes down to it, the players will win games, and, and it comes down to them performing on Saturday. And I'm just really looking forward to our guys doing it. Now, speaking of those Patriots, uh, we'll have an update on Kyle Van Noy and what he did uh, when we visit Cougars in the NFL. And uh, spoke with Harvey Longy, who is in town this week, was watching the BYU basketball game. Says he's feeling better after a pretty scary car accident with his wife, Cassie, both there in person and a four- to six-month recovery. So we certainly wish Harvey the best as he comes back from an unfortunate injury. Yeah, and I mean, he's, he's going to be fine. He's a, he's a trooper and a fighter, and, uh, you know, I'm just glad that, that he and his wife are safe and, and uh, 
that his career can still continue after they, he gets through this, uh, this injury. Up next, something we've been waiting a while for, the first media interview from T. John Karoma that he's <laughs> taken on at BYU this year. You're going to arm wrestle him, right? I have no shot. So <laughs> I, I wore long sleeves on purpose because my arms I'm usually not worried about, but next to Tijon, they don't match. So, What would it take to get you to arm wrestle him right here? Well, if you know you're going to lose, why does it matter? So I'm, <laughs> you arm wrestle him. <laughs> I love him too much to arm wrestle him. <laughs> I, I would like to keep my arm. Yeah, and I, I like to keep my pride, so we're okay. <laughs> A reminder as we head to break, we at Ken Garf Nissan of Warham are improving things for our customers to see how. Come visit our showroom located on University Parkway. Ken Garf, we hear Cougs. After the break, as we mentioned, one of the BYU football senior captains will join us live in Studio C. T. John Karoma visits with the coach and me and takes your questions. This is BYU football with Kalani Sitake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. All the great things in life happen around great food. It's not just nourishing to your body, it's nourishing to your soul. Come into downtown Provo, see the amazing things that there are here, and you'll come again and again and again. Provo is so beautiful. I think that you'll find that when you come to Provo, there is something for everybody now. We've got a perfect recipe for success here. We've got good food, music, a good art, and we've got a lot of great culture here. So come and have some fun in Provo. At times it can be tough, but you do have some really good people here, great teachers that are willing to help you out. The BYU TV Sports Post Game, UMass versus BYU, Saturday after the game on BYU TV. We're looking for our daughter, Kylie. Is she here? You answer my questions and then maybe I answer yours. I will get you inside the settlement, Silas. Because you pity me. It's not too late for you to set everything right. Killing our priest won't exactly endear you to the ancestor or to our people. Before you kill me, hear me out. Social media, hashtags, internet, what? These are some super confusing things, but all you need to know is that Studio C is on YouTube and we are always releasing new videos. Subscribe to see all the cool stuff we're gonna be doing next. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake with your host, Spencer Linton. Inside Studio C in Provo, Utah, this is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Use hashtag Sitake Show for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions coming up in just a bit. We have now reached our player guest segment of tonight's broadcast presented by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. It is the senior captain and center representing Allen, Texas. Give it up for T. John Karoma. Good to, see Good to see you. Good to see you, man. Welcome to the fun. Oh, yeah. I'd like to point out T. John's shoe game right off the bat with the you know uh, classic I mean? Michael Jordan 11s. A little something. Carolina Tar Heel Blue to. to match his shirt. Exactly. Carolina Blue out today. You feel okay. me, Coach? Hey, you know. <laughs> a little something I slight. I pre-issued from B. <laughs> <laughs> Solid choice. Okay. You, this, was cal this was a calculated move on your part. You know, like, I'm on BYU TV. I had to do a little something. <laughs> yeah. you know what I, mean? I, had to, I had to do a little something for you guys. <laughs> Senior day on Saturday for you, T. John. Yes, sir. What are your emotions like right now as you approach your final game in Lavelle Edwards Stadium? Man, it's crazy. Uh, it's crazy. Four years went by really fast, you know, and I can't believe I'm a senior. I can't believe this is almost my, my last game wearing the blue and white. It's, it's really pretty sad, honestly. I'm, 
I'm excited for the opportunity to get to play with my boys a couple more times, but I'm, I'm pretty sad about it. I am. You have taken on several challenges, not just on the football field, but also in the classroom as an economics major. Yeah. What in the world were you thinking? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. It's actually really hard, too. <laughs> but um, but I'm, I graduate in April, wow. hopefully. Awesome. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Pray for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, really, though, how do you balance that type of demanding classwork mm -hmm. schedule with everything that's going on in the football season? It's been really hard. It has been. Um, and we miss class, you know, a lot sometimes. And so I just, I've been working as hard as I possibly can, really. That's all it is. And I meet with as many tutors as I can, maybe with the professors as much as I can. And I've been working really hard at it. Now, not to mention the full time support you have to give to your girlfriend, who is Miss Utah. Jesse Cade Riley, so technically that makes you Mr. Utah. Mr. Right? Utah, yeah. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. <laughs> well, along with that new nickname, you have several <laughs> you have several nicknames. Which would you say is your favorite? I didn't know I had any nicknames actually. What? Yeah. I had no idea. What about Big Cat? Big Cat. <laughs> That's just my mom. Oh, that's your mom. Okay. <laughs> that was, uh, there we go. I got that name when I was like five years old playing rec league football, flag football. I don't know. She's the only one that still calls me that, but she loves it. Okay. So yeah. what, how, how big were you when you were five years old compared to other kids? I was, I was, I was bigger. I wasn't like huge, but I was the bigger kid. I, you know, in, in, uh, like in the rec league sports, like you have to wear like a, a sticker on your helmet or something when you're overweight or, or you have to, in our league we have to wear a 90 number to show the other kids that you're heavier than everybody else that was me okay <laughs> no, what, do you, what do you prefer big cat or mr utah hey i i i, call, I just call him tijon so <laughs> he's uh he, he deserves all the respect and he doesn't need, need a nickname unless he asks for one so um <laughs> you, you've never really dubbed yourself any nickname so he's it's okay he's always been tijon yeah yeah i i I'm amazed that he's doing this interview and that he's, because he doesn't do, do media really ever, right? This is was one of the first times. Yeah, I think it's my first time in a little while now, actually. And you got stuck with me. I got stuck with, dang it. Uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, both of your parents are from uh, Sierra Leone. So yes, when sir. you committed to BYU, mm -hmm. this mountain backdrop, what did they and your whole family think about this opportunity at BYU? Oh, my mom was so excited. My mom was very, very excited. So uh, they were baptized. Some Mormon missionaries found them in Dallas right before I was born. And so I grew up in the church and everything, and my mom was very excited for me to go to BYU. She, was, she, uh, she couldn't wait to send me 20 hours away from home. And <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, now, there are various reasons for that. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's, uh, yeah, she was very excited about it. She, lo she loves BYU. She's BYU's biggest fan. All right. You've... You've said, you've gone on record before and said that your favorite sport is soccer, or one of your favorite sports mm -hmm. is soccer. And you said that if you were 100 pounds lighter, you'd be the world's best player. Yeah, that so sounds about right. If you, if you were to play soccer yeah. at 100 pounds lighter, what position would you play? I'm scoring all the goals. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scoring every so what is that, like forward, center striker, or something like okay. that? Okay. I'm scoring every single goal. Now, is that because you don't <laughs> score a lot of touchdowns in football? Is that kind of That's what, yes. <laughs> in soccer, I got to score goals. To be the star? <laughs> okay. No, I, uh, I love soccer. Soccer, I mean, I love football first, for sure. Um, I, like, I like playing FIFA on Xbox and mm -hmm. on PlayStation. <laughs> but I do like soccer a lot. Soccer's fun. Now, I know there are some intense competitions within the locker room there are. that deal with FIFA. You get in on this, Coach, or do you stay away from that? No, once video games got, uh, like, Five buttons or more. I stopped playing. <laughs> Mike Tyson's punch out. Yeah, I'm, I'm old school. You it's know, your jam. Like double dribble from the jump. <laughs> Back when you had to like blow into the cartridge for. Yes. You know, so. yeah. 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 I'm old school. Right there with you. Right there with you. Okay, T. John. In high school, uh, you did the shot put and mm -hmm. something called pile lifting. Yeah, that's a typo. It's power lifting. It's power lifting. <laughs> okay. Not yeah. because we were like. What yeah, I don't know who put pile lifting. lifting. Yeah, power lifting. Expert pile lifter, T. John Karoma. <laughs> Just going around picking up piles of dirt or something. <laughs> power lifting. Well, you are from Texas. So there's a lot of dirt in Texas, right? Uh, speaking of the great state of Texas, mm -hmm. what, in your opinion, what makes it so great? Because everyone's got an opinion, Texas? Right? Yeah. Number one, Whataburger. 
Oh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. We got some Waterburger fans. <laughs> number, number two, high school football. Okay. And, Allen, uh, Texas. Allen, Texas. That's the best of the best. The Eagles, right? The Allen Eagles. The Allen yes, Eagles. Sir. Okay. And uh, yeah, Texas is uh, heaven on earth. All right. Open up Allen, the Texas Allen, pipeline. Allen, Texas is heaven on earth. For BYU <laughs> with T. John Karoma. <laughs> You blocked your tail off along with uh, the rest of your offensive line on Friday night mm. and helped Squally Canada go off for one of the top yes. ten individual rushing performances in the history of no, BYU Squally football. Squally had a day. Definitely. 213 yards. What was that like for you to watch him do that? It was, uh, you know, I was happy for Squally, you know, because every, everybody has their tough times during the season. Squally's kind of had some his tough times during the season. I was really happy for him to have a day. You know, Squally um, – he made us look good sometimes, and, and we make him look good, and I was just really happy for him to, to see him go off like that. He had a great day. He had a great game. And this is where we bring in the cheesy, uh, squally nicknames. High squality running. High squality. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. I haven't heard that one before. Whom Kalani calls, he squalifies. He's qualified. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. You all right with those? Yeah, I'm good with those. Okay. Now, squally told me after the game that uh, when he got – Caught, he ran out of gas on like yes, 11 out of gas. Line. And he said, This, this, was, was, this was embarrassing. And T John came up to me and said, It's a good thing we scored a touchdown because if we didn't, it would have been your fault. Yes. <laughs> no, definitely. I thought it was a touchdown. I, I started celebrating and then I have to catch my breath and get on the ball again. And, <laughs> and so, like, it was, we were in the huddle and we were making fun of him. And I was like, I was like, I was like, it's funny because we still scored. Had we not scored, we'd be pretty mad at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. All right, we've uh, we're off to a rip roar and start with T. John Karoma, man. You can stick around for a few more seconds. For sure, for sure. We got more with T. John straight ahead, and when we come back, we'll go to our live audience and social media. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day. Like buying your first car, what a beaut. Or serving your mission, you come home and hop right into college. And then that magic day comes, marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey. But you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. I went to BYU with the intention of finishing my degree. Along the way, things got a little bit busy. I always had that idea that I was going to go back, but as a non-traditional student, I just felt that uh, that opportunity was not going to happen until I explored what BGS really offered. The BGS program gave me more flexibility and gave me the education that I wanted. As I was walking to the podium, it uh, was almost surreal. I don't regret getting my degree through BGS. Hello, Americana. For you, the war is over. You are now prisoners of the German Reich. Play it one more time. So you're actually going to build a violin in a prison camp. Before long, you're ready to trade anything just to stop that next drop from falling. You just keep thinking. Peace on Earth, goodwill towards men. This war will end. And how we face it in here will make all the difference when it does. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. As promised, your look at some former BYU Cougars in the NFL and what they've done recently. How about Jamal Williams? 20 carries for 67 yards. Hard five yards in a Green Bay Packers win over the Chicago Bears. Kyle Van Noy and the New England Patriots now 7-2. He had five tackles and a win against the Denver Broncos. And a shout-out to Michael Davis with the Los Angeles Chargers had a tackle against the Jaguars. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. I'm Spencer Linton sitting in for Greg Rubel. Saturday marks T. John Karoma's 50th game at BYU. 50 games, 50 man. Games. 
starts. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you to be the guy for 50 games, 50 games as the center? I can't believe it's been 50. That's crazy. That's so many. It's gone by so fast. It's been so much fun. It's been a ride. I'm, I'm going to miss it. It's crazy. 50 games, that's a lot. Wow. I've been at it for a long time now. You're an old man, I'm, I'm old. I really am. I'm a senior, <laughs> and uh, no, I'm going to miss it. It's been fun. Four years as a starter, and this question was asked from our audience during the break, but what are your aspirations after BYU? Yeah, um, definitely. So, number one, my main goal is to play in the NFL. That's goal number one. Um, other than that, I, I just, you know, I have, I'll have my degree with economics and hopefully I can find something to do with that. That doesn't sound as fun as playing in the NFL. <laughs> but, uh, so hopefully I'll get to continue to play. But uh, we'll see how it goes. Listen, I'm excited for it. You can find something fun with economics. <laughs> just walk in there, flex your muscles and say, Is that all it's going to take? Give me the funnest <laughs> job. That's how it works. <laughs> no one's going to say no to that. Uh, how does... Coming off the performance that uh, you had on Friday night, how does BYU one-up what you did against UNLV and take a step forward against UMass? Definitely. No, we're excited. Uh, you know, the, the game plan didn't change much. We're going to go to – we're going to play UMass this Saturday, and we're going to try to do exactly what we did last Friday, just um, try to run the rock as much as we can. Joe Critchell's is playing quarterback. He's a freshman. So we try to take as much pressure off of him by running the football. Um, and uh, so we're excited for the, for the challenge. We're excited to – as an offense lineman, we lo if it was up to me, I'd run the ball every play. Mm. And, so, and so I'm excited to, you know, I hope that's the game plan for this Saturday is to just run the football as much as we can. Okay, well, we just want Joe to be dancing like he was Joe after Joe. the UNLV game, right? <laughs> definitely. No, definitely. Okay, are you ready to tackle some questions from the fans on Twitter? Let's do it. Of course Let's go. you are. First question from uh, at Greg, is it uh, Rebel? Rebel? Oh, oh, Greg Rebel. Oh, nice, Greg. <laughs> Greg tweeting in. Hello, Greg. What are your recollections of your first BYU start as a true freshman at UConn in 2014? Yeah, I was really scared. <laughs> I was so scared. I Because um, it was my first college game. I was like, man, what if I'm actually really bad at football? <laughs> what, what, what if I get beat in front of all these people? And... Uh, that was a fun one, though. Uh, man, I felt like I was watching the Taysom show, though, <laughs> against UConn. Taysom was a man. That's a dude. Taysom is a good football player. And, but it was fun. It was, and it, uh, that first game gave me a lot of confidence for the rest of the season and for the rest of my career here at BYU. All right. Question number two from at Ryben3. T. John, what is the key to increasing the bicep mass <laughs> diet, bicep curls three times a week, or is it all in the genes that none of us have been blessed with? No, it's not genes, okay? Um, I'll tell you what, I worked really hard with Coach New this offseason, really hard with Coach New, and he taught me that for biceps, you need a lot of reps, a lot of reps and a lot of eating. That's what I do. A lot of reps and a lot of eating. A lot of reps and a lot of eating. Yes, sir. That sounds pretty good to you, right, Kalani? <laughs> hey, I got biceps too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of eating. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Just eat a lot. Just go to the buffet table. We don't need wow. a gym. <laughs> yeah. Mind blown Just right the buffet, now. exactly. Amazing. Okay, question number three for Tijon. At B Royal Blue Coog, what is your favorite way to celebrate a touchdown with your running backs or wide receivers after they score? I get pretty excited when we score. I, um, I get really excited. I actually celebrate so much that I have to walk off the field because I'm so tired. <laughs> and so I don't always get all the way down to the end zone. <laughs> but, uh, but when it's close, when we're in the red zone and we score, <laughs> then, then I, love, uh, I love jumping up with all those guys and, and we get pretty excited. It's fun. I love seeing those guys score. All right, I, feel well, like, we, I feel like we all scored. We look forward to more celebrating yes, this sir. Saturday. Senior day, man. Senior day. Well, I, hopefully we have a lot of scores this Saturday. It's happening. We just need to get the custom uh, Michael Jordan patent leather Something like cleats that, yeah. for you. <laughs> I think actually I think they're on their way. <laughs> yeah. I think, I'll get on it. <laughs> I think Coach said something about it. I don't remember. We'll see. Sure. <laughs> senior parting Why gift. Not? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thanks, T. John. Give it up for T. John Caroma. More TV for T. John Caroma. Stay with us for just a minute more, T. John. And a reminder that we at Kengar Honda of Orem have a new dealership. Come see our showroom floor located on University Parkway. Kengar Honda of Orem. We hear coops. 
after the break. Your questions for the head ball coach from the audience and Twitter. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. You have everything you need. Yeah, I think so. Well, you forgot this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> hey, you can do this. Thanks, Dad. Let's go, Daryl. We're gonna be late for the All game. Right. Well, heard mother. Gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember. You only like sparkling water, room temperature. On, Make sure he wears go. his sweater. Go, go. Go, go. Go, go. We are going to see you again. Son, my father gave this to me when I made the team, and now it's yours. Oh, no, Dad. I'm not on the team. I just got this at the store. We're so excited. We just bought front row tickets for all of your games. What? They were expensive, but... Anything to support our boy. Support me in what? I'm not on the team. You should know. We paid for the tickets with your college fund. Well, since you're on athletic scholarship now. Gear so legit, they'll think you're on the team. BYU Store. Gather around for family movie nights on BYU TV. When a workaholic dad takes his children on vacation, they discover that the local lake monster may be more than just a gimmicky tourist attraction. Watch Magic in the Water. Grab the popcorn and hit the lights for family movie nights all this month on BYU TV. Next time on The Story Trek, I visit a town that used to thrive. Now it's nearly a ghost town. And I meet a man who spends most of his days in a blue box. You live in a blue box. <laughs> And I meet a woman who's played for her church congregation for the last 70 years. I was put in as organist when I was 11. Wow. And we had a pump organ. <laughs> Tonight on The Story Trek. Even though it's an individual position as a punter, it really helps the team for me to try and do it the best of my ability. The BYU TV Sports Game Day Replay, UMass versus BYU, Saturday, 11.30 Eastern, 9.30 Mountain, on BYU TV. There's the snap, handoff Squally, Squally middle, lowers the shoulder pass, and stays on his feet into the end zone! Oh, Canada, once again, Squally scores, BYU 20, UNLV 7 with the PAT pending. Our good friend Greg Rebell on the call. That's the exciting play of the game presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan innovation that excites. We are back with BYU football with Kalani Satake here in Studio C in Provo, Utah. Coach, we just enjoyed a nice interview segment with T. John Karoma, but now it's, it's back to you. We're... <laughs> we, could, we could have kept T. John here the whole time. <laughs> He's a great young man, by the way, and I love coaching him. It's just an honor to coach him. And... Be involved with him and, and football is nothing that defines him he's so much more than that but um i don't think there's another football player that's played for BYU that actually has played as many snaps as he has as he's played more snaps in, in four years we have to do that study spencer you, you have people that can get on it but yeah i'd have to think that you, as you guys watch him on saturday you're, you're not going to have a lot of people that have played more football games for, for byu than tj on karoma so i uh, just really appreciate it you could tell from his voice and uh, how, how much passion and how much he loves BYU and being able to represent the Y. So, so I love that kid. All right, Coach, a moment ago we saw T. John Karoma blocking uh, for Squally Canada on that two-yard touchdown run. What did you see X's and O's standpoint from the offensive line and the run game that just was so successful, especially in, on a run like that at they, the goal line? They did a good job getting movement up front, you know, and um, I think Squally did a good job finding the, the gaps, finding the holes, but... Um, if you if you watch the the game, a lot of the O linemen were on people, and they're getting knocked back and and moving them off the off the line of scrimmage, and that always helps out for running backs to find open seams and and uh, find gaps to, to run between. So it's been really nice. The O line's been really consistent all year long, and it's nice that we have a running back that can find it and, and have some consistency there at the run game. One of the best and most unique parts of our weekly show with Coach Satake is when we let you ask the coach questions, whether it be from our live audience or on Twitter. We're ready to roll, and we'll start this week's Q&A here in studio with a question from Kirk Holt. Hi, Coach. Um, what is the team's uh, greatest triumph this season? I think it's just staying together as a group, you know, and, and um, 
unity. I, I know we've had a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities for, for just really bad things to happen within the locker room, and those guys have been unified, and it's because we have really great leadership on our team. You know, we, we have a, I said we've had a lot of guys that played a lot of plays and played a lot of games, but we also have a lot of guys that have sacrificed a lot in life to, to be here, return missionaries, Eagle Scouts, four-year starters, and a lot of guys that just um, understand and love their family and understand what they represent here at BYU. And so the biggest triumph is that we're together as a group, and I think, um, you know, not being able to divide us has been really nice, and I think that's going to be huge for us going into the future. All right, a question now from Twitter, at Old School BYU asks, we have used many offensive schemes this year based on personnel. Is the plan to keep moving toward a pro-style offense? The plan is to score points and win, right? So offensively, whatever our best strengths are, that's what we're going to try to do. And uh, we have, um, even if you look at teams that have gone pro-style, they, they have to have some sense of, uh, of spread game in it. They have to be able to do a lot of different things. And although you may do something that you major in, you got to have a lot of other things that will help complement it and help you win games. And so we say that pro style is something that we want to do, but it's not just limited to pro style. We, we have the ability to do a lot of different things as, a, as, a, as an offense. And it took some time, but I think we can, depending on who's playing quarterback or running back or what our situation is with our skill positions, we'll be able to find ways to just score points. And that's, that's the goal. I could care less what the system's called. Let's just have a BYU scoring a lot of points offense. Yeah, let's just call it the winning offense, right? Yeah. What offense are you running? Winning. Yeah, and that's and that's all that matters. And, and in order to get that, you have to cons have some consistency. And and we've been we've been stricken with injuries and things like that that have hurt our our program and hurt our offense. But um, the consistency has been up front with the O line, and those guys have worked really hard. And so uh, with these last two games, let's hang our hat on the O line. Let let, let them do their job and what, and be the strength of our of our offense and our team. Okay, back to the studio questions now and uh, Jaron Jones. Is it easy to coach? Is it easy? It's so easy. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to make it look harder than possible. So, uh, no, I, um, it, it's, it, it's a job that I absolutely love, you know, and I, I can't believe that I'm doing it. And so the goal is to do a, a great job at it so I can keep it forever. So that's the... Uh, I love, I love being around these young men. That's what makes it the best part of it. Uh, the people and the family and the people they have to work with and now being at BYU and representing a school that I absolutely love. So I get to coach people like T-John and Fred Warner and all these great players. And so, um, yeah, I, it, it's, it, to me it's, it's easy, right? Um, but I want to make it easier and let's score, score points and win games. All right, Coach, stay right there. Looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's? Try Smith's Click List. Order online, pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com slash click list for details. More Kalani question and answer coming up after this short break. You're watching BYU Football with Kalani Satake. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Anxiety, restlessness, insomnia, fatigue, depression, weight gain. The, the biggest thing that patients don't understand about low thyroid is that it's usually not a thyroid problem. It's actually an autoimmune disease that's attacking the thyroid called Hashimoto's disease. For us, it's really cool to see how much of an impact we can make at Red River for these patients' health and for their, their quality of life. Red River Health and Wellness can help with the treatment plan remotely or at any one of our locations. Ever since the accident, I don't remember anything. And it breaks my heart seeing you love me and not knowing if I love you. Goodbye, Vaughn. 13 comedians. You don't work at all and you don't deserve this. You have a serious Netflix addiction. With an attempt at drama. Yours is a love beyond compare. This cannot be. And stumbling at every step. Hey, Johnson family, I got a package from your grandma. Can't you see we're busy? Get out of here! 
this fall. Look for their return to sketch comedy. Studio C, Season 8, Mondays at 7 on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Fourth quarter time on Super Tuesday. It's our final question and answer segment for the coach. Use hashtag Satake Show to get a question in for Kalani Satake. And our next question comes in studio from Christopher Scarden. Hi, coach. How do you like your turkey cooked? Oh, great question. <laughs> I just like it cooked. I, <laughs> I could take it anyway, it doesn't matter. As long as it's cooked, I'll eat it. Maybe if I'm hungry enough, I'll get it raw. So yeah, good question, Christopher. <laughs> it's the sides that matter, right? So, you know, wow. stuffing and all the other stuff that goes with it, so. That question I'm was- I'm hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Christopher. Chris knew what he was doing. That, uh, that question was so good that we're going to take a break and try and go find <laughs> Kalani some turkey. No, I don't need turkey. I don't need Go teach you. Stay with us for game day details and final thoughts. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Hey! You guys here for the show? Totally. Yes! Everybody listen up. This Friday, we're meant for something greater than this. One donkey. Belly rub. Three camels. The dancing bird. <laughs> and one rat. Oh, I am not a rat. I'm a pygmy jerboa. Our team up. We're finally doing something important to save the first Christmas. Looks like it's up to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, too big, too big. <laughs> <laughs> the Star. The story of the first Christmas. Great PG. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. I see the road less traveled, run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine, shining, sunshine, boy, and only think I might just stay alive. At times it can be tough, but you do have some really good people here, great teachers that are willing to help you out. The BYU TV Sports Post Game, UMass versus BYU, Saturday after the game on BYU TV. Every other radio station, they're either so slapsticky you can't handle it, or they're so serious you don't want to listen to it and exhaust you. So what we're trying to do is give you a little bit of fun, but also we're trying to help you see the good in the world. There are a lot of positive examples out there that don't make it into the regular news because they're not extreme enough. So we go try to show you some of the moderate examples of amazing people, and then around all of that, we teach you how to have fun and enjoy life. You may not know this, but Studio C has a YouTube channel, so you should go subscribe and see sketches, behind the scenes footage, and lots of other fun stuff that I'm pretty sure you're gonna wanna be a part of. Think about it. Think about it. Find Studio C on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Connect with us, we'll connect with you. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. Saturday, we've got you covered on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Live pregame coverage of UMass at BYU begins at 1 p.m. Eastern on BYU Radio and 2 Eastern, Noon Mountain on BYU TV. Watch Countdown to Kickoff. The live game will air on BYU TV and BYU Radio starting at 3 Eastern, all day football with our fantastic, hardworking crew at BYU Broadcasting. Later that night, a reminder to watch or listen to BYU basketball when the Cougars host UT Arlington, the team that ended BYU season last year in the NIT on BYU TV and BYU Radio with pregame coverage starting at 8 Eastern on radio. Time for our two-minute drill of sorts before we say goodbye for another week on this penultimate edition of BYU Football with Kalani Satake. This coming in again from our friend at Greg Rebell, Coach, 
who is watching from New Jersey, getting ready to call BYU Princeton tomorrow night. The coin toss call has been tails 11 times in 11 games this season. Do you find that interesting? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Unless both sides of the coin are tails, then I find that uh, yes. great. You know, okay. so I, I mean, I don't know. I just, we leave it up to the captains. They're smarter than I am. He also said, P.S., I can't promise white pants, but I will wear a white shirt for our season finale next week. Are you okay with the white pants? Yeah. They could be tighter, right? The tight white <laughs> pants could be. I think Jimmy Fallon does a song with yeah, that. Remember that? Got my tight, tight pants. pants on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You should do a segment on with tight pants on. All right, we'll uh, and do the dance. We'll talk with the producer about that. <laughs> you sure. have an in with the producer, so you should be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm being told we we can do that, <laughs> coach, for you. <laughs> hey, thanks for the time, and thanks for letting me sit in with you this week. You've done a great job, Spencer. Thank All you. All righty, yeah. go Cougs. Great stuff from the coach, Kalani Sataki. We'd love to see you in studio for next week's show to request seats. Go to BYUcougars.com slash Satake Show at noon Eastern time Monday morning to reserve a spot in Monday's audience. Reminder, we will see you next week for Tijan Karoma, the coach Kalani Satake, and every member of our BYU TV and BYU radio crew. I am Spencer Linton. This has been a fantastic edition of BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand. Showcase your business with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. What if I told you that if you're injured, your lawyer will come to you? Doesn't matter where, home, or hospital. Really? Really. They do that? Seriously injured? We'll come visit you at your home or hospital. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. When I switch into race mode, I usually just visualize what I'm going to do in the race. The times that he puts out now as a paracanoist is, is comparative to able body athletes, so he's amazing.